Hello and welcome to Things We Said Today, our weekly podcast about anything and everything to do with the Beatles as a group, as solo artists, past, present, and future sometimes, if we have some info. I'm Alan Cozen, the author of The Beatles from the Cavern to the Rooftop, and got that something, how the Beatles, I Want to Hold Your Hand, changed everything. And I'm joined by my regular co-hosts. You know Ken Michaels as the uh, the host of the syndicated radio show, Every Little Thing. Hello, Ken. Hi, Alan. Hi, everyone. And you know Steve Marinucci as a writer for Axis.com, Billboard.com, Variety.com, Goldmine, and various other places, uh, reporting on the Beatles, the Monkees, and all kinds of other things, and also is the author of a book, Meet a Monkey, Davy Jones. Hello, Steve. Hello, Alan. Hello, everyone. And uh, this week we're going to sort of pick up where we left off on part one of our Mono and Stereo show, and uh, we're picking up with Rubber Soul. And we're, you know, I think we're not going to, like, get to every single minute difference if it's a matter of fading two seconds early on one version or on the other hand if it's fading 10 seconds early which we do have a few of this week uh, you know we'll do that um but you know it's funny because uh, i don't know i spent a, a lot of time sort of listening to some of these things today and uh you know and also reading um people who have spent a lot of time cataloging some of these differences. And there are things that I heard that weren't cataloged and there were things that were cataloged that I just don't hear. There were things that, you know, where someone said the mono has more of this than the stereo and listening to it, I thought the opposite. So, you know, this is a, a wonderful game everybody can play. And, um, you know, the, the stereo and mono are now plentifully available, both, um, you know, on CD, on LP. And uh, it, it, it's actually a lot of fun to go through all the tracks. And we're going to point out some of the more interesting differences in the second half of the Beatles catalog. So does anyone want to start here? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, with Rubber Soul, uh, Drive My Car, to me, the the biggest difference is that um, in um, the mono mix, you don't hear the cowbell as much mm -hmm. as you would in the stereo. That's the main thing for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, in general, w when you listen to the stereo Rubber Soul, the one thing that I kind of dislike when you talk about stereo, as I said in the previous show, I'm not a big fan of lead vocals in one channel mm -hmm. and you have that throughout most of rubber soul right uh with the exception of say think for yourself which has george in both channels or what goes on which has ringo in both channels you do have the background vocals the harmony vocals in both channels so it's not as um harsh to me hearing lead vocals in one channel mm -hmm. but um you could say that throughout rubber soul you know s since the first two albums which we pointed out you have that on both albums. Rubber Soul is a lot like that in that regard. Yeah. Just in general, you know. It is. Uh, and um, when the first four CDs came out and I interviewed George Martin about the whole stereo mono business, um, we talked about Rubber Soul. And you can actually read that interview on a site run by Steve. It's still up there, right? On the Abbey Road yeah. site? Oh, yeah. The Abbey Road site. Yeah. And the Abbey Ro it's on abbeyroad.net. Yeah, it's still there. Okay. And what I had asked him was, you know, since he has been on record as seriously disliking the first two albums in stereo for exactly the reason Ken just described, why was Rubber Soul so much that way? And I mentioned that I, I had heard that, you know, they were like down to the wire on Rubber Soul. Uh, making it and it was you know in danger of being late so maybe they had to mix more quickly than than they would have liked to and he said no 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 you see what we were doing was we were trying we were experimenting we were trying to come up with a mix where you could make one mix in stereo and fold that down to mono 
and that would give you both the stereo and mono mixes without having to make separate mixes. And he said, and we found that if you put the vocal in the center, once you combined the two channels into one to make the mono, the vocal was four decibels louder than if it was only on one side. So that's why they were doing it on one side. Now, there are a number of reasons that this argument doesn't make a lot of sense to me, first of all. One is that he disliked the stereo mixes of the first two because they had the vocals on one side and instrumentals on the other, but he's okay with this because it's experimental. But (laughs) the result is exactly the same. And the second thing is there are so many instances on Rubber Soul where the mono and stereo are so different. You know, they're quite obviously separate mixes, so that whole program i guess failed you know Mm -hmm. so anyway but hey the wonderful world of the beatles but i also think that there's a difference between listening to them in on headphones and listening to them you know through speakers right Um, sure at at least for at least for me i mean i think i can handle the the vocals on one the instruments on the other out of speakers but when you're listening in earphones it's it's become and i haven't always been this way but it's it's pretty i can't take it now i just don't like it it just does not sound good you Mm -hmm. know when you're close in like that it just doesn't make sense and the whole thing and and a lot of those early mono stereo mixes don't make sense for that reason which is the difference in and i kind of noticed this you know, today and when I was listening today, in the later mixes, the later mixes make a little more sense. Not and not necessarily a ton. I mean, not it's not an overwhelming you know thing, but but they seem to make more sense to me. I don't know. How did, do you guys agree with that? Is that or is that is that me well, just the talking? Later, off the, the later mixes where they centered the vocals. Are you talking about or? Well, yeah, I mean, the, well, the later stereo mixes, yeah, yeah. as opposed and the mono mm-hmm. and the mono mixes themselves and the mono mixes too. Taken together, I think everything works a little better than it did originally. And I don't know, you know, it's that's weird, you know, but yeah, yeah. Hmm. maybe they were, you know, maybe what you said about experimenting, you know, maybe at that point because they weren't really experimenting, that was. The difference, you know, that mm-hmm. was the big difference. But you know, in general, we've talked about the differences between the the whole mono versus stereo experience, and you know, there there's something to be said about stereo, despite having vocals in one channel. You know, there's more of a presence that you feel overall when you listen to stereo. It's um, it's a it can be very satisfying listening to mono, and it's a solid sound. And certain things, you know. Rubber Soul can be very satisfying listening in mono for me. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, because it's one solid sound, certain things I feel have more, maybe it's mixed a little bit hotter or have more uh, more presence in mono. Like, for example, and this is just my ears, but uh, like think for yourself, the fuzz box, the, the, the lead guitar has more presence to me in mono. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if you feel that way. Or, or the piano in, in You On See Me has more presence in mono. Mm-hmm. But that's my ears. So yeah, I don't know how you feel that, about that. But I, I think there's definitely a case to be made for that. Um, I, I especially, I, I mean, I used to notice that on the, on the, early, uh, on the early songs. There, was a, there were a couple of, uh, uh, and I guess they're, they'd be gray market, Japanese releases back when... We had the first four in stereo that had a lot of the, or the first four in mono that had a lot of those same songs in stereo, and you you could hear the you could hear the presence. Maybe maybe it was just a thing that you were missing because you were missing the hearing the stereo on those on those songs. But there was definitely that there was definitely a presence there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I like, I like that you can pick apart the instrumental textures easier right. if you can. You know, have two different sound sources. I mean, even if they're not, even if the s- vocals are centered, it's it's still easier to hear, in some ways, what's going on uh, in stereo. 
but, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, but the mono, those, those, those are great tracks. Uh, I well, kind of like having there, them both. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, yeah, I do too. And, and there's no question that speaking generally now, when you get to Pepper, especially Pepper, not so much the White Album because the White Album is a, is a discussion on its own because of the mono White Album. That's where everybody, that's where I became really familiar with the mono stereo differences. Mm-hmm. Um, but Pepper, especially when you listen to the Pepper, the mono Pepper from the the White CD box, it's it's like. You know, amazing. I mean, the 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 power of those those mono mixes is is amazing. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. And and you know that's uh, that said. I mean, that's why. I mean, we've had and we've had this discussion about mono versus stereo. We had it on the last show, but I mean, I think that propels the argument that that the mono mixes were, in some respect, what they wanted. Although I know you were saying last time that it isn't as much true as probably we've always thought it was, Yeah, you know, but anyway. Yeah. So moving on through rubber soul, um, I should, I should mention, um, the two our two big sources for these apart from listening ourselves. Um, I've got the, uh, I, I dug out the old pamphlet version of, Mitch, Mitchell McGeary and William McCoy's Every Little Thing. Uh, they then did it as a, a book length uh, thing for Perian Press uh, or Pop Culture mm. Inc., which became Pop Culture Inc. I really kind of like the pamphlet version, but it was it came out in 1976, and so there were a lot of there were a number of things that actually were not available in stereo as of 1976, and uh, so it's not complete. But it's really good. Um, and the other yeah. is Joe Brennan's website, which uh, I, I can't remember the name of the website, but if you Google Joe Brennan, it's B R E N N A N, you're bound to find his. Do you have it? Steve? You're talking, talking about the Usenet guide to recording variations? Yes, that's exactly it. There's um, also the um, Beatles an- Anomaly Guide, or Anomalies. There's also that too. Right. Um, that's another good and free resource that everybody should have. There's also this thing that I discovered, and I'm not even sure how available this is, by Michael Todd called I'll Get You. It's basically, though, basically the same thing as what Lewison has done, um, where he lists every recording date and lists all the tracks that were recorded. And but I don't take think he numbers. gets into the anomalies, does he? No, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't get into the anomalies. The anomalies is, is so. yeah. And then there's another. There's another book, <laughs> and this may be this may be tougher tougher to find. It's called The Beatles Mixes by Hol, Holger Scholler and Thorsten yeah. Schmidt. Mm. And I don't know where where I got this, but it has it lists tra- it, it, Unfortunately, it lists the the songs in alphabetical order, and it lists the the mixes track by track or the different mixes separately so it for example with honey pie it has mono one stereo two and those are from the two from the uh, uk um mono and stereo white albums mono three is argentine and brazilian mono white album stereo <laughs> four is german white album so i mean and this is uh, not recent so this is i'm trying to see what year this is uh 2000 yeah. So this this is like 17 years old. Mm-hmm. So, but there's another book to look for. Plus, there's the the three um, Pedrasic um, Castleman books that we talked about uh, on the last show. So, um, okay. there's I mean there's a there's a lot of resources out there. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the Castleman and Pedrasic don't get into mono stereo differences either too much, do they? I don't think so. I think no. they get into it a little bit. Um, am I wrong there? Uh, it seems like I re- I do remember here uh, reading about those in there. Yeah, but okay, but not as not as extensively as McGeary and the other sources do. Yeah, not, and McGeary not uh, and McCoy do theirs alphabetically too, and uh, Brennan does his by basically recording date. So, and we had started Rubber Soul sort of 
in track order uh, with Drive My Car. Uh, so we may skip back and forth between those two methods. Um, <laughs> the, the next one I have here is, is Norwegian Wood, um, which has a couple of interesting anomalies, um, including coughing sounds uh, on after the line, you know, told me to sit anywhere. You can uh-huh. hear it, but you really kind of need headphones, and that's in the mono Oddly enough, you would think that something like a cough you could hear better in stereo, but in the stereo mix, they seem to have pulled the fader down after told me to sit anywhere so you don't hear the the cough. And yeah, that, that for me was the main thing. Um, Brennan also mentions a second thing, where uh, af- just as the vocal begins, she told me she works in the morning and started to laugh that there's uh, you can hear someone saying sounds good. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, right, and, and it might have been George because it was right after the the sitar, the little sitar bit there. Um, and Brennan points out that you can actually hear that on a bootleg where George's track is separated from the rest, um, and he hears it in the mono mix. I don't hear it. I I tried with headphones. Um, I didn't hear it there, but he does. So. Um, Give it a try for yourselves and see what you think. Hmm. And, you know, the only other thing to say about that is, I mean, it's not just mono stereo, but they, when they remix that track for uh, love songs and for uh, a European album called The Beatles Ballads, they move the vocal to the center where it wasn't in the original mono. It was on one side. Anyone have anything else on Norwegian Wood? Um, no. Okay. Not me. Steve, you got anything? Uh... I mean, are, are you talking about, are we still talking about Rubber Soul? I mean, there's there's yeah. several things. There's the longer fade out on uh, Michelle and Stereo, which I, I think, you know, you don't want to get, get it. We, I, I think we didn't want to get too much into those. Let's say if it's um, over, over five seconds, we should mention. <laughs> well, Run For Your Life uh, is nine seconds shorter in Stereo. Mm. Which is which is, um, and I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the source where I got because I have a long list here. Um, uh, Steve Hoffman has one. Is that the one? I'm not sure where I got where I got this uh, list from, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's there's one right there. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, longer. Uh, fade- did you mention the uh, additional guitar part at the end of uh, What Goes On? I did not, but yeah, that's okay. that's a big one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's, that's only that's only in stereo, right? So now, if there's an instance where I think it's better with that guitar finale in that song, which you know sort of is an argument. Okay, it's only one track, and so many so many instances of mono things being better than stereo. But but this is a case where the stereo sounds finished and the mono sounds unfinished. Mm-hmm. Just because of that little guitar figure at the end, it, it really kind of needs that little guitar figure. And, and when you hear it in mono without it, it, it just sounds incomplete. Yeah. It adds something at the end. Yeah. Definitely. Um, we could also look at, while we're uh, in Rubber Soul, um, there's there's not too much different in We Can Work It Out, but Day Tripper has a few different mixes. The U.S. mix was different than the U.K. mix, um, stereo, and, you know, the, the differences have to do with things like double tracking, you know, one sounds double tracked, one doesn't. Not so much of a difference between mono and stereo, except that in stereo, you obviously can hear that guitar dropout, which you don't really hear in mono because... It's mono. You hear everything else going on, you know, and it disguises the dropout a bit. Mm. Right. Okay. So that may do it for Rubber Soul and Rubber Soul Era. Actually, we didn't mention I'm Looking Through You. Oh, that's right. Because the stereo one has the false intro. In the U.S. only. Mm. Right. Well, <laughs> well now, now all these things are international, right? Because they put out the U.S. albums on CD. Anybody can get them anywhere in the world. So, but back in the vinyl days. 
Mm. It was U.S. Only. But wait a minute now, without listening to the, without having the, the U.S. box in front of me, didn't they use the remastered versions for that, Alan? And not, not... for that. No, I, they I think, did. You know, where something was clearly different, they used the actual U.S. stereo mix. It's been so long since I've li- listened to that U.S. albums box, and it, partially because I don't particularly care for it. Yeah. Um, but plus but, the, the original U.S. albums boxes, the you know when they put it out as two boxes and only made it as far as um, right. The capital, the cap, the capital mixes boxes did that. that yeah. That's de- that. There are capital versions boxes. That's definitely true. They they did do that. So. Although, although when it first came out, there was a pressing error, where instead of having the mono and stereo mixes, they had the stereo mix twice. So you got that, um, I think you got those false starts in stereo and in mono. Right. So there's a, a collector's item, like, like you know, people collect stamps with misprints. This is a, <laughs> a CD that you need to get. Well, they actually, they actually um, had people, I believe, send them back in. Yeah. As I recall at the time. Yeah. Uh, but the, the press not, copies came people, out that way, and and right. I, I kept mine. So yeah, they didn't they didn't have us they didn't have us send them back in. Thank no. goodness. Yeah. But um, so yes, I remember I remember the all the discussion about that. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. Also, also, Day Tripper is longer, and the mono hmm. mix and the fade out is longer. Is it? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. So on to Revolver. Who wants to yep. start there? Mm-hmm. Steve? On the opening track on Taxman, the the uh, the cowbell starts at uh, too small in mono, um, but in stereo it doesn't start until yeah, I'm. Which is, I guess isn't a, a but I mean, it's a difference that you're going to notice. So, mm-hmm. but uh, it's, it's one of those weird things, um, you know, so... But there, there's a, a start of it right there. Okay. So, Ken. Yeah, that's it for Taxman, as far as I know. But I'm only sleeping. Has differences in the backwards guitar bits between the mono and the stereo. Right. And the the mono, not only is the the main solo in the in middle somewhat different, but you actually have some a few moments where you hear some backwards guitar while there's vocals. Mm-hmm. In the mono, that is. Yeah. yeah. And then isn't isn't the version that's on yesterday and today different also with the back the backwards guitar? Well, so there are basically four mixes of I'm Only Sleeping. There's the mono that was sent to the U.S. for yesterday and today. And then Capital made a fake stereo mix from that mono mix. Um, so the original yesterday and today release... Uh, in stereo was just the mono mix in fake stereo. Then there was the stereo UK, and there was the mono UK. And then there was a fourth mix. And the fourth mix was another US stereo mix um, around, you know, the the early to mid-70s. Capital, in some cases, apparently not all cases, some plants seem to have, you know, when they repressed yesterday and today, they substituted the fake stereo tracks with real stereo tracks. Um, but for some reason, the real stereo track they had for I'm Only Sleeping was different from the UK stereo track. If that's not confusing enough, um, there is also a talk of a French EP. Um, that has a different mono mix with the guitars coming in at different places. Um, but Brennan, in his analysis, says that uh, he's listened to them both and he feels that the French mix, so called French mix, is really just the UK mono mix. And he does this thing. I mean, this is, this is another reason you should check out his website. He has listed for each verse where the backwards guitar comes in on each of the mixes. So that is excellent work, I have to say. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. So This is getting, this is getting complicated. Mm. Okay. So let's continue with the revolver. 
So looking at, you know, the, the chronological list, um, the, the first thing that they really started for this uh, was Tomorrow Never Knows for Revolver. Um, and Tomorrow Never Knows is yet another special case um, because that had several, that had, first of all, a mono mix that came out and was then withdrawn. The original British Revolver mono uh, had a matrix number, uh, uh, XEX 606-1 and it's and that version is now known as the Matrix 1 version right uh, and that has a completely different mix of Tomorrow Never Knows that's kind of worth seeking out because because it really is so strikingly different um, and the the biggest difference really is at the end you know there's a lot more piano going on that you don't hear on either the standard or uh, standard mono or stereo Oh. Uh, mixes and uh you know there were some other little ver differences too in terms of you know how loud the vocal is uh, compared with uh you know the the loops and other effects and things and they must have um they must have just reconsidered you know what they wanted out there and uh substituted you know the next time uh on the next pressing, which was um, another, you know, XEX 606, I think, uh, 3 or something. No, 2. 606-2 and 606-3. So That's a shame because, you know, that that I love the end of Tomorrow Never Knows, and it would have been more fascinating to hear it have a longer fade out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with a yeah. lot of jangly piano. Yeah. Um, also... Uh, in the standard mixes, mono and stereo, one of the big differences that always struck me is that uh, the, in the second verse, I think it is, uh, where John is singing Love is All and Love is Everyone, right in the beginning of that, you hear on the left channel a feedback whistle in the, yeah. uh, in the stereo version. And you yeah, yes, you do. You go to mono, yeah. it's not there. So mm. it's just it's just one of those fascinating little things, you know. I never noticed that. Mm. So <laughs> after all the times you've listened to tomorrow and ever knows, you just, there's still new things to hear. <laughs> that's right. well, that's the great thing about the Beatles. You always learn something new. So whose turn is it for the next uh, next track? What is the next? What what are, have we gotten to? Well, love you too. Love you too. Um, there's a longer fade out in mono. I'm not sure how much longer it is. It my is my... 13 seconds. That is a, <laughs> that is a monster long fade out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at Bren, or, uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, Brennan. Um, my printout is not great, but um, it just says it doesn't say how many seconds. Where Where did you get 13 seconds from, Brennan? I no, but I know, also, I'm... you know, when I, I read it in Brennan, but, and then, you know, for each of these things that I read in any of the sources, I then went back, you know, to the tracks and, you know, made oh, sure that, that it was correct because, because I don't agree with all of everything everyone has said. And the, like I said, there were some things I heard that haven't been cataloged. So, uh -huh. uh, yes. My version is very old and it's possible that he updated it and yeah. you know i don't have everything that you do um but in any event so where where are we going now here there and everywhere i notice a difference in here there and everywhere that i haven't seen catalogs anywhere and that is that in the mono version at the very end when they they sing that last line you know here there and everywhere and then it comes to an ending along with they're singing, there is a descending guitar line, you, the guitar using a volume pedal that you hear in mono, you don't hear in stereo. It's, it's a really nice touch, and it's missing in the stereo version. Mm. Steve? There's, also, there's also a, uh, a backing vocal uh, say, saying, I'll be there um, in the uh, uh, stereo, but not in the mono. Mm -hmm. So there's another difference. Okay. Can you have anything for that? No, I never noticed any differences between the mono and stereo of that song. So, mm -hmm. Okay. 
So let's move on to I still Yellow have Submarine. Been. Okay, well, Yellow Submarine, big difference um, in the very first note. <laughs> yeah. In the uh, mono version, the guitar starts the same time that Ringo sings. Mm -hmm. But in the stereo, it starts on the word town. Right. And also, um, when John says, a life of ease, that's missing in uh, the stereo mixes, the mm -hmm. early stereo mixes. Mm -hmm. And here is yet another interesting thing. When the Yellow Submarine song track was done, I talked to the guy who mixed that. This was before they got Giles in. And he said, you know what I try to do is I try to recreate the mono version, but in stereo. So where John comes in late, I have him come in at the same time he came in in mono. And I said, well, okay, this was before the record actually came out. We did this interview, so I hadn't heard it yet. And I said, okay, what about the opening guitar chord? Do you have that? And he said, well, no, I didn't do that. Now, I, he didn't explain why he didn't do that. But then Giles, on the one album, did exactly the same thing. His mix is very different than the Yellow Submarine song track mix. But he does bring John up again, you know, where those lines are missing in the original stereo, but he too left off that opening guitar chord. Don't understand the rationale for that. Any theories? Just so we have another mix that's slightly different that we have to have. Yeah, but we want, if we're going to have a, a stereo <laughs> version of the mono mix, we want that guitar chord there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think maybe they felt that... Um, because Yellow Submarine, apart from being a single, was also a movie, and the movie used the mix without the guitar chord, they probably felt that everybody sort of thought it begins that way, that's how it should begin, and didn't want to cloud up the issue with a guitar chord. I guess. <laughs> it's not a very good theory, but it's the best I can do. <laughs> But then if the single was mono, more people heard the single when it was a hit. That's right. And then that had the guitar at the beginning. <sighs> right. Exactly. That's why it's not a good theory. <laughs> 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 okay. So moving along, um, let's see. Mine are still in chronological by recording, so got to get you into my life. Oh, okay. the big thing is really the, the ending there, Yeah, which goes on for another five seconds. But you hear vocals from Paul mm -hmm. that uh, that you didn't hear before. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's it's um, and you got to listen. Well, uh, you should listen with your headphones on, because when you're so used to the stereo version where it fades, it's it's really exciting to hear an extra five seconds at the end. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see. Oh, Dr. Robert, I mentioned last time. That was Dr. Robert was the track that made me realize that some of these differences are really big. And the difference there really is the chorus vocals and the way they're mixed, the well, 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 you're feeling fine. The way I'd always heard it on the U.S. mono and stereo that I grew up with and even pretty much the British stereo, you just hear, well, 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 you're feeling fine. On the UK mono, along with that, there is a sort of like a descending, you know, uh, backing vocal. It's like, you know, well, 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 you're feeling fine. You know, it's, it, it's a completely different line that is just lost in the stereo mix and the U.S. mono mix. But the first time I heard that, um, I, I, I thought, wow, that's like a, a whole part of the arrangement that I haven't been hearing. So what else is going on? And then just went on a mono binge, listening to all the mono discs that I hadn't listened to since uh, I replaced them with stereo. And that, well, there's, also, that... there's also supposed to be um, maracas on the uh, U.S. mono. Um, that aren't on the on the stair on anything else, and the U.S. mono also has at the very end. You can hear John saying, "Okay, Herb." <laughs> <laughs> Anyone I know. figure out who Herb is, or is it just John calling someone by <laughs> a name? You know, probably just John 
you know, yep. mouthing off somebody to somebody. Mm. Mm-hmm. There's no engineer that I know of with the first name Herb. So. Right. No. What about and your bird can sing? Yeah, I don't have anything for that. Do you? Um, the guitars are supposed to be mixed louder in the U.S. version. Mm-hmm. In, in in the um, in the mono. I see. And the stereo is supposed to be the same level. Hmm. Okay. It's been a long time since I heard the U.S. version, so. Right. There's a there's a different stereo mix on the anthology DVD. Well, for yeah, what it's worth, different mixes of lots of things on the, pretty much everything on the anthology DVD. They went right. back and and well, uh, among other things, made them five point one. So then, hmm. shall we move into Pepper, or the I Pepper, think so. the Pepper era, starting with Strawberry Fields? Actually, no. No, we, we need to do one Paperback out. Rider, Paperback mm. Rider, and Rain. Okay. To me, the only differences were pretty much the uh, you know the the power of the mono mixes compared with the stereo mixes. But anything else? In Paperback Rider, yeah, towards the very end when they're all singing Paperback Rider, it's there's a lot more. It just sounds like more effects, more echo effects, mm-hmm. and there seems to be this one beat on the drum mm-hmm. that I hear from Ringo that I that I don't hear in the stereo at that moment. Mm. And also, Paperback Rider is a little bit longer, the mono version. Okay, Steve, you have anything? No. Anything on Rain? Rain and Rain does seem to be. Um, there's the, the effects seem to be different on rain. I'm just, I'm just going from memory now. I'm not, I don't have any notes in front of me, but it seems to me that, that it, that it, it is different. But like I said, I don't have any notes in front of me. It just seems, seems that way. I don't know. Okay. Perhaps people can listen to it and write in. That's yeah. They... <laughs> I mean, you're, it, and they, they absolutely, they absolutely, they should, yeah. you know, for, and, Again, you know, point out. Let's point out that we're not doing every single. You know, we'd be here, you know, for years, going through every single, you know, variation. There's just no way we can do that. So, yeah, yeah and I think it also makes sense for us to talk about things that are strikingly different since we're not playing them on the show you know at least we can we can say what the differences are and people can go listen to them on their own mm-hmm. um, so with strawberry fields there are actually four mixes of that thing um, the original uh, UK parlophone single uh, and the US single were the same mix then there was a stereo mix that came out on magical mystery tour uh, then there was the German, was so-called German stereo mix. Um, that was, you know, those first mixes were done in '66. The German mix was done in '71, and then the fourth mix, another 1966 mix, touched up in 1995 for the anthology. But to me, the big difference, I mean, apart from the fact that there's like a lot of detail you can hear in stereo, uh, like you can hear you know, some counting, you know, before sections or to, or, or to be joined, I think. Uh, not not the one-minute join, but there are things where there's a cue for something else to come in. You can hear someone counting in, I think, the German stereo mix. I don't remember hearing it in any of the others. But the big difference between mono and stereo is that in stereo, he says cranberry sauce twice. And he said, and it fades out before the second one in mono. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's very feel, important to know. <laughs> Sometimes you feel a little silly saying these things. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we live for. <laughs> right. We'll talk in, in detail, detail about that if we ever do a, a Paul is Dead show. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who are convinced that, he's, that John is saying, I bury Paul, but. To me, it's clear as day that he's saying cranberry sauce. But right, no, I I, I agree with you there. Yeah, you I know mean, the fact that they they slow down his vocal, you know, kind of makes it a little more mysterious. I mean, I I always used to think he was saying I'm very bored. Mm. But you know, then when you when you hear it at the actual speed, it's really clear what it is. So, 
Uh, but I, I love I love Paul's explanation of that. You know, where I, I think was I don't know if it was in the anthology or someplace else, but he said, "Yeah, it may seem strange um, that he's saying cranberry sauce, but if you know John, you know that he's likely to say something like cranberry sauce at any time." <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> makes sense to me. Yeah. So, uh, into pepper itself, what have you guys? So nothing, got? nothing about Penny Lane. Um, I didn't uh, hear much difference apart from, you know, the, obviously the promo trumpet ending. Um, right. What do you hear? I don't hear any difference at all. Well, I was wondering if you guys did. No, alas. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, the, we have the bootleg versions, but uh, you're right. No, there, there, isn't, there isn't a whole lot. Uh, I mean, that that... The mono version, uh, I like them. I like the mono version, and I really wish that they had put that trumpet for uh, that trumpet promo trumpet on the release single rather than just give it to the radio stations. That was that's too bad. Yeah, but well, well, he decided he didn't want it, and so mm -hmm. had it withdrawn. And uh, you know that's his prerogative. That was right. Paul. That yeah. was Paul. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's an interesting prerogative, you know, just to have it end with the sort of feedback, you know, mm -hmm. rather, rather than, you know, the trumpet ending was a very natural ending. I, I think it was kind of a, a semi-avant-garde decision to dispense with it. That's a good point. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm continuing chronologically. So for me, the next thing with a difference is Mr. Kite. Um, and the difference there is that the tape loops in the sort of, you know, crazy break where, you know, the loops have been thrown up into the air and rejoined and played at different speeds and backwards and forwards, uh, they're a bit different in mono and stereo. And it's hard to say which has more because, you know, Brennan says that uh, the, I think he says the mono has more. But I listen to them both, and, you know, it's just that you're hearing different things. I kind of thought the stereo had more in some ways. So at least it's a difference. That's all we need to know. Mm -hmm. So pick a track, any track. How about Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? Okay. Some um, big differences. Yeah. In mono, it's um, a little bit slower. Mm-hmm. And John's vocal has a flanger effect in it mm -hmm. that you don't hear in the stereo mix. It's it's more um, spacey, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. That's yep. that's the big difference there for me. Yeah. When when uh, when Giles did the um, the uh, remix uh, last year, um, that was the first thing I noticed uh, because you it really it really stuck out in the in the new stereo mix. Because you were used to not hearing it, mm -hmm. and then it was there, and that was that was one of the things I really really loved about that about that uh, new Pepper version was that. Yeah. So that was probably one of the one of the few mono stereo mix differences that I had heard even before running into that Doctor Robert thing. Um, I remember getting the stereo Pepper when I you know exchanged uh, when I got rid of all. <laughs> my mono albums originally and got stereo and being a little disappointed that the stereo Lucy in the Sky didn't sound as spacey as the mono one. Um, mm -hmm. I probably borrowed my mono back from my little sister who I gave all my mono albums to originally, um, you know, to hear what the difference was and, 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 and seeing that it was the effects, you know, the, the flanging or phasing. But, you know, and, and I just thought, okay, you know, I guess maybe in stereo it didn't work quite the same way, but you know there is there's a track that sounded much better in mono, and now it's nice to have a stereo version that has that effect on it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. I don't know. I'm very partial to the stereo. <laughs> That's just me mm. for, the, for the whole album. So yeah. Uh, within you, without you, the big difference I think really is is just the laughter at the end. Um, it's different in mono and in stereo. I think it also comes in a little earlier in one or the other, uh, possibly earlier in stereo. It's also I think a bit 
louder in stereo, and in, in mono, it's a bit more subtle. I mean, it, it, it's still obviously laughter at the end of that heavy philosophical track, but um, uh, it's, it's much more out there in stereo. Okay. All right. There's the big difference in She's Leaving Home, mm-hmm. different speeds. The mm-hmm. mono one is it's much faster. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been so used to the, the stereo one. It's the one that I prefer, but since the Beatles, you know, the, their first priority was mono, that's the way they wanted it, mm-hmm. was the faster version. So, The information I have here says that it's actually a different key, which is quite a, quite a difference. Well, that's what happens uh, when you make it faster. Right, well, I mean... It's like I, half a I, step. I, yeah, mm-hmm. so, well, it, I mean, isn't it more than half a step if it's a different key? No. No, in this yeah. case, it, in stereo, it's an E. In mono, it's an F. So right. So half a step. Right. Okay. Okay. I, I thought it was a full step, but okay. I kind of like mind. it in mono. Um, you know, I, I, there is yet another difference uh, that I heard as a kid when I switched from my mono pepper that I originally had to a stereo. It just sounded weirdly draggy to me in stereo. Uh, and it... And, it had never seemed draggy at all in mono. It just sort of, you know, went along at a really good clip. And, you know, even though it's, you know, a a string score and you could argue that the song is, you know, slightly on the gooey side because of the strings, if you're inclined to say that about things with strings on them, which I'm not necessarily. Uh, But in that (laughs) case, you know, once it got slowed down, it was like, well, what... What happened? Where's the energy that that song had? You know? So, yet again, I think uh, Giles uh, made a, a good choice there to do, you know, the mono speed, but in stereo. Good work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> deserved I a, actually think deserved because, a Grammy. <laughs> yeah, I think really? since She's Leaving Home is a sad song. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes sense. I think it emphasizes that more in, if it's slower. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. I just think it's more powerful as a slower song. Okay. But that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. No, right. that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. And then the only other track I have different on Pepper that I can think of is the Pepper Reprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, the the very beginning where they're all around the mic just, you know, chattering uh much louder in mono than in stereo and you still can't really hear what they're saying but but you know that i don't think what they were saying was the point i think that was all about vibe right you know and that was much clearer in mono i always used to think there was an extra bar of drum beats in the mono intro but uh listening to it again it's it's actually not but yeah, and well, and also, of course, the connection from "Good Morning" to "Good Morning" to the Sergeant Pepper reprise is different in stereo and mono. Right. So we talked about some of this stuff when the Pepper album came out. So. Mm-hmm. Or the reason. Yeah, I have I have trouble with that little guitar break. Yeah. That goes into um, the Sergeant Pepper reprise, which is like a split second where it's like dead air. Yeah. And and you feel like it's a mistake. <laughs> At least I do anyway. But, you know, I'm so used to the stereo version where it's a much smoother transition. Yeah. So. Hmm. I didn't hear it so much as a, a mistake as, you know, kind of the equivalent of studio chatter. You know, it's like, OK, we're picking up the instruments, getting ready to do this. You know. Mm-hmm. That was just the way I heard it. But. Yeah. Okay. And then also at the end of the reprise, you've got Paul screaming at the end. Yes. You know, there's some right. stuff in the mono that you don't hear in the stereo. Yeah, or you can barely hear it. You know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and that, again, that's vibe, right? You know, we can't tell what he's screaming, but it's just exciting, you know? It's like in a live show where, you know, someone's up there screaming at the end of the song, and it, it, it just sort of was a nice touch that kind of went missing in stereo. Hmm. Yeah. I I love all the differences in mono and stereo on Pepper especially, you know, because because they're all, you know, they're all really significant. I mean, you got key changes, you got 
you know, things not quite hooking up on one, like that, you know, guitar that morphs into a chicken and that works on the other. And, uh, you know, all these things are in the, in the, and, and Paul's screaming on that and the group chattering before it. It's, uh, so many touches to keep track of. It's, it's, it's a, it's a great thing to go back and forth between mono and stereo with. Well, there was so much happening there. I mean, that, that's why, you know, it, it makes more sense to, for it, this kind of stuff to be happening now than before. Yeah. You know, that that's what's, you know, so interesting. So, Okay, let's move on to Magical Mystery Tour. Um, Ken, you want to start with the title track? Uh, I didn't notice any real differences there. I mean, I didn't see any major difference until Blue Jay Way for me. Oh, okay. Did you guys see? Did you guys hear a difference in the title track? Um, I don't have anything in the title track myself. Do you, Steve? Not recording wise. I know that the video, the video is different. But no, not on the not on the recorded version. Not on the the record versions. No. Go ahead. Uh, so. Well, you know what? I I did notice one thing about Magical Mystery Tour, and that's. For my ears again, Paul's lead vocals, I think, are a little more distant when he sings um, the Magical Mystery Tour is hoping to take you away. That part mm-hmm. it just seems it's not as upfront to me as in the stereo. So the slight difference there. Right. OK. Um, Steve, do you want to pick up the next one? Um, well, it depends on which next one we want to hit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with Blue Jay Way, which... Um, there are no uh, – the backwards vocals are missing in the mono, yeah. but they're present mm. in stereo. That it has a whole a... different feel that way. You mm-hmm. Know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think um, on the current version of with the remix of the soundtrack on uh, the video, they're using a stereo version without the backing vocal. The the mono one normally doesn't have the backing vocal, but now they have a stereo remix that also got rid of the backing vocal for the the video. So okay, that's wow, so many different mixes floating around there. It's uh, it's hard keeping. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on your mother should know um, what I have basically are just some sort of phasing effect differences. Um, it, in mono, there's a bit more phasing there is in, than there is in the stereo one. But other than Paul's, that, Paul's vocals sound a little bit different, maybe because of the phasing or um, in mono that is mm-hmm. on that song. Okay. I think so, anyway. Yeah. Well continue with the side a stuff walrus walrus has a bunch of differences right right uh if you count the the rarities version with the the extra stuff in the middle there's extra there's extra stuff in the intros i mean it's there's all sorts of weird things going on you know where uh uh, differences floating around on that thing yeah um if you just go by the uk good alan what they did is they combined um, various of the versions that were out there into a version that just sort of had everything. And yeah, there's the, the intro, you know, uh, in mono, it's a four beat intro, but in stereo, it's a six beat intro. Mm-hmm. I think I have that right. I don't think it's backwards. Yep. Um, right. And then in stereo, apart from having the six beats in the intro, they also have a, a longer section, you know, in the middle where, you know, things begin to change and get a bit crazy. There's a uh, a little bit of a few bars of sort of orchestral. That section is a little bit longer in stereo than in mono. So right. what they did is they, yeah, it's it's just kind of crazy because, you know, there was there were so many different mixes going on uh including you know they always had to use the one that had the radio stuff put into it because that couldn't happen again you know if they wanted right. to have that shakespeare so but the rest of the track is edited differently for for different mixes and uh, gets 
that gets a bit confusing. Yeah. What I find really interesting about I Am the Walrus is that if you listen to the mono version, there are two times when the the first two verses end and John is singing, I'm crying, and then you've got two beats after that. And you hear, like, I think it's a cello that does the two notes. Da, 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 da. And in stereo, Ringo does a fill mm-hmm. underneath that. Right. In mono, you don't hear drums at all. Hmm. At both those points in the song, there's no drums there for those two beats each time. Yep. I remember one of the one of the bootlegs. I thought I think it was the Purple Chick. I think had the had the the radio thing, uh, the full radio BBC. Not the I mean the the uh, unadorned radio part that's mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. Which was interesting to hear. That was the first time I remember hearing that. Mm-hmm. So. Anyway, okay. So then on to side two. We already did Strawberry Fields, but there are differences in Baby or a Rich Man, which is, you know, about 10 seconds longer. Mm hmm. And, and that's another one. In, with, in the mono. In the mono. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry, mono is 10 seconds longer. Also, originally, the US version was fake stereo sounded really kind of mediocre. Uh, then the German, another 1971 mix for the German version, uh, really brought out the bass. And I remember getting that thing and putting it on and hearing it not only in stereo, but with a really three-dimensional bass line. It goes way down there. Uh, and then was so stunned by that that I took out the capital one again and played it just to make sure, <laughs> you know, my memory was correct. And yeah, it just sounded terrible by comparison. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then there's All You Need Is Love. Absolutely. Which, which is can... longer. It's longer in mono. That's the main right. difference for me. Right. That's the big... Okay. Uh, there's also some hey. differences in the intro. So on the mono, you can barely hear the drums, and you can barely hear the piano. In stereo, they're very clear. The mono does have a longer fade by, like I think that's 10 seconds or so, and you hear green sleeves for a second time. Right. Uh, but in stereo, about half a minute in, you can hear someone saying, uh, shouting out, check. In stereo, it's not in mono. It's gone. <laughs> kind of weird, you know, things like that seem made to be mixed out, and it's it's kind of funny what doesn't get mixed out, and, you know, and, and they must have listened to it and said, oh, no, I don't can hear that anyway. <laughs> you know, just left it in. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's funny hearing all that stuff from the live broadcast mm-hmm. that we didn't with that we that they pulled out and that's something they didn't pull out which is you know really that is rather obvious what well, you know that should, it should have been pulled and it wasn't yeah so it's like the broadcast one has uh in the intro has a tambourine instead of a snare drum uh, right and i believe also in the orchestration of the live one they quoted an old song, uh, one of those old standard in the mood, right? And, and that had to be removed because it was in copyright and uh-huh. you know, where green sleeves wasn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Wonder what would happen if that kind of well, obviously, it would probably be different now uh, if they had you know done it at this point in time. Yeah, um, it may be out of copyright by now. I'm not sure. Right. But, right. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, so this brings us to the end of 67. And it looks like we're running out of time before we even got to the White Album. So we will continue with the White Album at a future time because there actually is an awful lot of difference between the stereo and mono White Album. And when we were growing up, we didn't even have a mono white album because it didn't come out in the U.S., only in England right. or, or in Europe, too. Uh, but here we had only stereo white albums, uh, so we had to catch up with that later. Uh, That's right. 
And when was the mono available here in the U.S.? Only as an import. Right. I remember, you know, I remember uh, going into a, a, a vinyl record store in Berkeley, and um, they it was I actually found a, a either one or two mono discs. I can't remember now. I know I found at least one though in their bargain bin. It was like wow, huh. and, and that was the first yeah, that was the first time I had, I had ever heard it. Uh, so yeah. that was kind of cool. But so. We will pick up with that. Um, if not next time, then on a future show. Um, it will be relatively soon, I believe. And uh, before we go, I guess we'll just sort of go around and let you know how to get in contact with us. Uh, Steve? You can write to me at beatlesexaminer at gmail.com. You can catch me, as many people have, on the facebook group beatles news and information where i hang out and post beatles stuff somebody asked me about the the coda releases that are on amazon and on amazon uk i don't know if you guys are familiar with those these are the public domain things and they're they have quite a few of them right now actually amazon both amazons don't have too many of them uh they have the vinyl ones but not the cds but basically it's all gray market stuff i mean the sound quality on them from what i understand is good but i mean if you're a collector you have everything that they've they've put out there's no reason to get it unless you really need to have everything but in any event so that's just one question that i answered this week and uh, i thought i'd mention that so okay and ken uh you can reach me by email at every little thing at att.net also, my website is KenMichaelsRadio.com. There's Beatles Trivia every single week, which starts every Monday, runs through Sunday. You can win one of nine prizes every week. And there will be another special contest on the website that will start later in the week, probably Friday or Saturday. Not sure what it is yet, but to get a jump on it, it would be a good idea to check the website towards the end of the week. Again, that's KenMichaelsRadio.com. Okay, and the easiest way to get in touch with me is on Facebook at either Alan Cozen or my alter ego, Alan Cozen Remixed. Um, we all read the mail at Things We Said Today Radio Show at gmail.com. Um, and sometimes one or the other of us will answer it. So feel free to write. Uh, if you have something interesting and compelling, we'll read it on the show or deal with it one way or another and so uh this has been a (laughs) this has been a crazy show yeah really so and we're not done (laughs) and we're not done yes we are so we should just we should just say we should just say a big thank you to all of our listeners who listen to us whether it's on podbean or itunes or youtube because in just uh, two to three days, we had over a thousand downloads on Podbean alone. Yeah. So uh, that's that that's extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's so good. thanks to you guys for listening and for your support and spread the word about the show. Yep. Okay. So for Ken Michaels and Steve Marinucci, this is Alan Cozen saying thanks for listening and catch us next time. Mm-hmm.